There's a sweet song in my heart tonight Out on this lonely road It's like the sound of the sun going down And it warms me to my soul There's an old song in my heart tonight Someone I want to see Highway signs keep saying it's time to get back to sweet Tennessee. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 128 of the Five Reese Files. Today is Thursday, July 11th, 2013. I know, I'm recording a day early, that never happens! <laughs> Uh, it is 8.23 in the evening. I have just put my last set of pans in the oven. I'm exhausted, so I'm a little slap happy. So uh, this podcast could be gay. Could, could be gay? What? <laughs> could be getting a little interesting. Uh, I have no show notes, and I really don't know what I'm going to talk about this week. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. If you are not a fan of tangential podcasts, if you like them to be more fo focused and organized, move along. <laughs> This is not the podcast you're looking for. Okay, here's the deal. I am deep in the frazzled stage of preparing for SSK. SSK is a super summer knit together, which takes place in Nashville at the Scarrett Bennett Center. My husband and I are driving. We are leaving Monday morning early. We're probably going to leave here about 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. We're heading to Katie's house on the coast to drop off my dog. Uh, Katie's fiancé is going to take care of my dog uh, while he's working this week. So we don't have to board him, which makes me really happy because we had a bad experience at the last border we put Jack's at. So, um, so that's that. And then we are hoping to get to Tennessee by Tuesday morning because there's some stuff... We're, we want to do in Tennessee before we get to Nashville. So we're actually first heading to Gatlinburg. So when we leave here Monday morning, or more realistically, when we leave Jeremy and Katie's Monday morning, we're going to head try and drive straight through the day and night to get to Gatlinburg by the next morning. We want to go to the Ripley's. Um, Ripley's has a huge like facility in Gatlinburg, so you can go to the Ripley's uh, Aquarium, and they've got to believe it or not, and they've got a haunted house, and they've got all this craziness. So we're going to try and do that on Tuesday uh, and stay in Gatlinburg Tuesday night and then get up Wednesday morning and go to Nashville. So that's our current plan. There's something, a noise being made in the kitchen and it's got to be the cat and I'm not really sure what the cat is doing because the other cat is looking at him like she wants to attack him. So we'll see what that's all about. Anyway, uh, this past week has been interesting and busy. I thought that I was in great shape and all I had was 20 pounds of sock yarn to dye and 10 pounds of Falkland. I was like, 30 pounds in six days, I totally got this. And then I got my shipment of the Luxury Fiber Adventurers Club fiber, which I'll talk about in a minute, and uh, realized I'd ordered more fiber too. I'd ordered almost, I want to say over 30 pounds of fiber to take to SSK. <laughs> oh, God. So I had 20 pounds of sock yarn, 10 pounds of Falkland, 10 pounds of Polworth, 10 pounds of Superwash Merino Tencel, uh, almost 7 pounds of Superwash Merino Tencel yarn, which is the red maple sock yarn. And on the thing, the paper, I didn't even look in the box yet all the way to the bottom, but it says I also bought more of the mountain maple, which is the 100% Superwash BFL yarn, which I haven't even gained up yet. Today is Thursday. It's Thursday night. I'm done dying for the day. I still have 4 pounds of Falkland, 10 pounds of Polworth, 10 pounds of Superwash Merino Tencel, all of the red maple, and all of the mountain maple to dye. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, my goal is going to be to get 5 pounds of each of the fibers dyed and all of the yarn. That's my goal. Um, I have all day Friday, all day Saturday to dye. I really can't dye Sunday because... I have to have time for it to dry. The humidity in Maine has been insane this week, so nothing is drying as quickly as I want it to, which is a waste of time and a pain in my butt. Um, and I need to ball band it, pack it, vacuum seal the bags, pack the van, all that needs to be done on Sunday. So Saturday at about 3 o'clock, I'm going to cut that off. Now, 
I told you guys last week that I was going to have to have a shop update. And I am going to have a shop update. There will be more information on that soon. I have a bunch of sock yarn and Falkland fiber for you guys. And I'll be able to tell you all about that in a little bit. Uh, as far as the week in review, other than being insanely busy, we haven't done a whole lot. I did head north today. We went to Millinocket to my husband had a doctor's appointment. And I met with the event coordinator of the... We're call, tentatively calling it the Highlands on the Fly, Highland Handmaids, Knitting on the Fly, see how that kind of goes together, um, Knitting Retreat, which is taking place the weekend after Ryan back in Millinocket, Maine, which is my neck of the woods. I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit, too. I'm really excited. We got some details. We got some stuff firmed up. It is going to be amazing. I can't even wait to tell you about that. The only other thing that we did this week was we did take a trip south. My husband's sister is up from California and his niece, so we went and visited them in Holden, which is right near Bangor, and then we kept going to Coastal and went and saw Katie and Jeremy, and uh, we talked to them about the dog, firm plans with that. I really just needed a few minutes of bestie time because I've been with my husband nonstop for a week and a half, a week, a little over a week, and I needed some girl time. I love him. I do. Uh, but yeah, and, uh, while we were on the coast, we stopped at my friend Karen's bookshop. Now, Karen is the owner of Works, which is a little bookshop in Searsport, and she's mostly used books, but some new books too. Um, used new rare books and an art gallery. She has this really cool space in downtown Searsport that used to be a bank, and there's a actual like old school giant safe in the middle of her store with like the huge several hundred pound door and it's like three different safes kind of nested in each other. It's just so cool. She's a really cool building. She also has a really fun um, personality. So this is Works. And it is on Main Street in Searsport. If you are in the area, definitely stop by. I did end up picking up a book and this is a book that I didn't know I wanted until I saw it. This is called Take Heart, Poems from Maine. They are selected by our Maine's Poet Laureate, who is our official poet, uh, Wesley McNair. And I've met Wesley McNair, and he's a very funny, very sweet man. And uh, these are the authors that are on the back. And I bought it because, A, I love Wes McNair, and I love his poetry. But I also love, and this ain't Vincent Millay, and Martin Steingesser, who I've also met. Um, there's a bunch of people here that I really, really enjoy. It's mostly free verse poems. Edna St. Vincent Millay wrote um, rhyming poetry. She's the one whose quote is at the top of Mount Batty. She lived in the late 1800s, I want to say. And I love her because she was a firecracker. She was a pot-smoking, pants-wearing, bisexual feminist in a time when that just wasn't done. And all of those things weren't done. And she did them all at once. So Edna St. Vincent Millay is a girl after my own heart. Um, just because she was a rebel and I love that. So I bought the book. Um, it is autographed by several of the authors. I don't know who, who all signed it. Uh, Elizabeth Tibbetts, Carl, somebody, I don't know. There's some people who signed it who are actually at the store doing book reading. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm actually reading a poem from this book out loud to my husband every day. So we enjoy a little bit of poetry daily. So. Anyway, okay, onward. There's not been a lot of knitting this week, not only because it's tour de fleece, but also because I've been flipping busy. The only thing I've been working on is the Sunday market shawl, which is that stock in that rectangle. It's longer. It looks exactly the same, but it's longer. Uh, that's it. But I have been spinning. Uh, you have seen, or you saw, that I spun the alpaca from Wonder Why Alpacas. This is the singles all put into a um, center pole ball. I'm hoping that will focus for you. It's wound so beautifully on this thing. Come on. Really? You're not going to focus? Oh, there it goes. Um... It just, doesn't it look almost like weaving? Like, it just looks so beautiful. This was wound on that Strouch Jumbo Ball Winder. I did take my time. There is a lot of yardage here. This took me forever. It's very, very thin. I don't know if you'll be able to see how fine it is. 
It's very fine. And uh, I'm going to apply this after Tour de Fleece because if I have to do this and keep it on the wheel until it's done, I'm going to lose my mind. So I'm going to leave it for now and I will apply it at another time. Now I did finish and ply, soak and dry. I don't thwack my yarn. I don't want it to be thwacked, so I don't. This is CJ Copic Creations Superwash Merino in the silver lining colorway. It is a bulky yarn. It is about 164 yards, 168 yards, something like that. Uh, it's under 200 yards, and you can see it's quite thick here. Uh, it's mostly purple and white, and there's a little bit of silver popped in there as well. The silver really didn't come out in the finished skein the way it did in the fiber, which is interesting, but this will probably become a drizzle hat, silver lining, clouds, drizzle, get it, but that's not for sure. We'll see. We'll see. And then I also spun some singles and I finished the singles and I am going to apply this hopefully tonight once I finish rinsing the fiber. This is a bat that I spun up. It is Enchanted Null Farms Black Magic Woman. It's a bat that is black wool. And it's got tons of sparkle and sari silk and all kinds of other really cool fibers. I spun it kind of in between the alpaca and the silver lining. It's my default thickness. I didn't think about this at all. I was watching a bad movie with the husband, so that's what it is. Um, and I'm going to apply this into a two-ply really loved spinning this. It was a lot of fun. I really, really encourage you to get Josette's stuff in Channel Farms. It's awesome. So that's spinning. So that's knitting and spinning taken care of. Tour de Fleece is going amazing. I love Tour de Fleece. Oh my god. My group has never been so active. I'm seeing people every day post stuff. I'm totally blown away by the stuff people are spinning. They're spinning stuff that I haven't seen in a really long time. I think Lynxia just spun up some mohair in the maritime colorway and that mohair was a special I had two years ago maybe maybe even three like it's been a long time since I've had that mohair it was really nice to see it again um, and to see it spun up I absolutely love that even if you have not joined Highland Handmaids yet you still can enter to win prizes I've got prizes for people who post every day random prizes um, people who post finished Highland Handmade skeins or have finished a skein spun with the Highland Handmade spindles. There's all kinds of categories for prizes. Prizes will be given out at the end of the tour when I get back from SSK because, wow, is my brain not available right now. But it's awesome. And even if you aren't spinning for Tour de Fleece, go over and look at the daily threads because the stuff people are spinning is amazing. And I'm not saying that because it's my fiber. I'm saying that because they are doing wonderful things to my fiber and <laughs> making me look really good, which I also love. Um, I've spun every, I took two days off, but I made one day up during the first rest day and I'm hoping to continue my trend and to make the other day I took off up with the other rest day so that I will have spun every day of the tour, sort of. Okay. Do we feel like we're going 10 million miles an hour? I hope you are not listening to me on downcast and have me at like double speed because I don't know honestly how you can even hear the words coming out of my mouth because I'm really overtired, Batman. Okay. Um, as far as growth and that stuff, I'm really not going to talk too much about that. I want to talk to you a little bit about the stuff that's going in the shop update this week and then the retreat and the club. So that's pretty much what the rest of this episode is going to be. So there is going to be an update this week. Now, please pay attention because the time has changed again. <laughs> Sorry. The shop update is going to be Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Friday is July 12th. So the update will be July 12th, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And I realize the internationals, that's going to put you at a bit of a disadvantage. But when you get up Saturday morning, there should still be stuff there. Now... The shop is going to close so that I can pack for SSK at noon on, well, as soon as I bring stuff to the post office. So let's say 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time in the morning on Saturday, July 13th. I'm closing the shop. So if you want anything from this update, you either have got to nab it or you've got to hope that nobody gets it and you're going to SSK and you can get it there. So that gives you a very limited window to order for me for this update. I know 
I'm sorry. I am moving as fast as I can and trying to give you as much time as I can. Now, if you order from me set Friday night or Saturday morning, your order will go out on Saturday's mail. So you'll get it, hopefully, Monday or Tuesday, which would be awesome. That's like no lines, no waiting. I have two fibers going to be in this update. Number one, sugar maple sock. I have 10 colorways of sugar maple sock going in the update, nine of which I can show you today. The 10th one is out on the line soaking wet so I can't show you. I also am going to have one, two, three, four, five colorways of Falkland. Oh, brain cramp. Six colorways of Falkland. Yes. Six colorways of Falkland and one colorway of, nope, just six colorways of Falkland. So, and I won't be able to show you the Falkland because three of them are in the oven and four of them are on the line soaking wet. Sorry, I know you guys really like to see that stuff before I do the update, but you're going to have to trust me. Okay. Let's look at the stock here in color rates, shall we? First one is one you've never seen before. It is called Blue Hydrangea. It is a soft purple, a very soft blue, and a few undyed areas throughout. So this is Blue Hydrangea. Well, I hope you can see all three. I don't know if that helps you or not. That's Blue Hydrangea. This is kettle dyed, so the three skeins are not even. So if you buy all three skeins, you're going to want to alternate in the larger project. The next colorway is Motion, which is gold and black and a burgundy, almost wine red. The colors are actually fairly accurate on here, despite the fact that it is kind of late at night. The next colorway is Fallen Angel, which is well, not accurate at all. Whoa, that's better. Two shades of turquoise and two shades of purple. They're different shades of purple. That's Fallen Angel. Empress, which is one of my oldest colorways. Lime green, medium green, and purple. I'll put these back in there so that I can still have room. One of the colorways my husband created, and he always loves when his color his colorways sell out, so feel free to stroke his ego a little bit. Justified, which is silver, bronze, and a brick burnt, almost brownish red. That's pretty accurate. Jezebel, which is a kettle dyed whoo red. Oh boy, bright red. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, I'll talk about that one in a minute. That one's special. Old Port, which is named after the Portland Bar District. Not that I've been there before. Navy blue of the coast, dark gray of the pavement, and brick red of all the buildings. Dinosaur Dreamin' which is a pale yellow, a couple of shades of green, and then darkening into a couple shades of blue. The one that you can't see is Umbrella Drinks, which is, no, not Umbrella Drinks, Dragonfly, sorry, Dragonfly, which is going to be in this update. Dragonfly looks a lot like Throne Room. It's oranges and magenta and per a couple of shades of purple. Uh, somebody... Jamel Knitter is spinning Dragonfly fiber right now. So if you go into the Tour de Fleece group and you'll you'll find her, she's um, she's actually spinning it on her spindle and plying on the fly because she's clever. So that will be in there as well. That's the one that you can't see. Now this last one requires a little bit of an explanation. It is saffron yellow and a chocolatey brown, almost an ashy brown. I wonder if I told you that this was a geek colorway called the Special Hell, if you would know what this was dyed from. This is, I'll tell you, this is a Firefly inspired colorway. It is dyed in the yellow of saffron, the chick that Mal, Mal accidentally gets married to, and the brown, it's brown coat brown. Now each of these are, it's dip dyed. So what I did was I held the skein in the middle. And I dipped one side into the brown and one side into the saffron. And as you go up the skein, it tends to fade and they tend to blend together. So you can see, I think this one does the same thing. It starts really, really um, strong oppositional colors and then they fade together into a more blended color. So 
This is called the Special Hell, and it is a Firefly-inspired colorway. It's the only time I've ever dyed a Firefly-inspired colorway. Someday I'm going to do more, but I haven't yet. So, if you want that, you should definitely get it. Now, as far as Falkland fiber is concerned, I'm going to close this just in case the cat decides she wants to jump. I have Hive Mind, which is yellows and blues kettle dyed, so they all kind of bleed into each other. Storm Chaser, which is a soft silver and light blue. 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which isn't as scary as the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Get it? It is uh, sort of a bronze, a deep blue, and a grayed out green, a seaweedy green. Kettle dyed, so they're all different. Jungle Book, which is lime green, bright purple, and turquoise. That is a KDO colorway. New School Clothes, which is a aubergine purple, a bright orange, and a gold. And what does that one say? Oceanic, oceanic, which is um, various shades of gray and blue and teal and a little pop of burnt purple. Lovely, truly lovely. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. So that's the six colorways of Falk one that'll be in the shop as well. <sighs> shop update is tomorrow night, Friday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Don't miss it. Okay? Um, that money that I'm getting from that update is what is going to make sure <laughs> that we can get to uh, SSK. All right. We've got just about enough. I had a huge update last week. Thank you guys so much for helping me out. I know that at least one person specifically ordered for me to help me out. And that is huge, huge, huge. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. It really did ease my husband's mind quite a bit. And thus he stopped riding my butt about money, <laughs> which is always good. Um, I think we've got what we need now. I just need a little bit more to make sure that we've got everything covered as far as incidentals, if the car breaks down and we need to stop at the garage, that sort of thing. So this update should do it. Uh, I'm excited. So excited. So ready to be on the road. Between here and on the road, I'm not excited about, but once we get on the road, I'm going to be super excited. Okay. Next up is the Luxury Fiber Adventurers Club. I have received most of the fiber that I need. Now, I had said that I'd hope to ship out the orders before SSK. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen, but it's not my fault. One of the fibers, one, the silk blend fiber this month, um, several people ordered the fiber wood silk option, and that was actually back ordered. I needed three pounds of it, and I got one pound. I called them today because I got the order yesterday afternoon. I called them today and said, uh -huh, I need this for a club. Do you know when you're going to get it? And they're not expected to get any more in until September. No worries. All I've done is I've changed the animal. So um, the three animals were yak, camel, and cashmere. So instead of getting the one, you're going to get the other. And then that, the people with silk will just flip flop. You're totally going to have the information. Everything is going to be fine. You're not missing anything. Nothing is shorted you. But I can't send it out because I don't have it. They did ship it today. It takes about a week to get here, so it should be here right about the same time I am. We will get it, and we will get it out to you guys. Um, everything should ship before the month due bit is up, which is the June 28th. That was when I closed signups, so it will ship before July 28th. So you'll have less than a month to wait from the time the club actually started to when you get your fiber. I hope you guys understand uh, I had everything ready to go, but I'm not going to send two-thirds of the people their fiber and leave one-third of the people out, especially when it would have been significantly early shipment for the club. So um, let me know in a private message if you have any questions or you need any help with that. Sandykins, do not let me forget I need to bring your fiber with me to SSK. Please message me and remind me if you watch this because I'm going to forget she lives in Sweden, so we're going to save her some money, and I'm just going to give it to her. So she'll have hers early. One person in an extenuating circumstance. I hope you guys understand. Okay. That brings us to the Highlands on the Fly Fiber Retreat. Yay, knitting retreat. I'm so excited. Sign-ups are going to go live on August 1st. Now, the brochure is going to come out in the next couple days. I finished 
We finished talking about the brochure and going over it, proofreading it today. Um, she, Sarah, the coordinator, is also going to give me some pictures. She has some video um, walkthroughs of the cabins. The cabins are gorgeous. Oh, so gorgeous. Everything is in, this is an ultra all-inclusive resort. Now, I can say that because not only do you get all of your meals provided, all of your, your lodging is provided, your towels, your linens, all of that stuff is provided. There's coffee and a coffee maker in your room. Also, gratuity is included, and I learned that today. So you're not going to have to worry about tipping the wait staff when you eat, um, because the place that we're actually eating is a restaurant that is open to the public. Um, it's a very small, quaint, uh, cozy place, and breakfast will be just us. We'll be the only people having breakfast there, but uh, they are open for lunch and dinner with the public. So um, you don't have to worry about the wait staff having to tip them. You're not going to worry about tipping the maids. It's all included in your fee, which is rad. Uh, also, Friday night is a social, and they're going to have some local wines and some wine tastings and stuff like that going on. If you don't drink alcohol or you can't drink alcohol, no worries, because we are going to have a selection of local main sodas and ciders. It, it will be in October, which will be deep in apple picking season, so we're going to have some other non-alcoholic beverages for you guys to have. That will be awesome. There is a bar at the restaurant, and I'm talking a real bar, people, with a complete, with a giant moose head over the top, full bar, beer on tap, wine, spirits, the whole nine yards. If you want to drink at the retreat, you're going to be able to drink at the retreat because there's liquor there. Um, you also can drink in your cabin if you have your own. You just can't carry the drink from the restaurant to the cabin. That's a no-no, but... If you bring booze, you can totally have booze in your cabin. There's plenty of cabins. There's plenty of seating. Um, you are not going to contact me when you're ready to sign up. You are going to contact the New England Outdoor Adventure Center it's at NEOC.com. In fact, I encourage you to go to the NEOC.com website, www.neoc.com. Very easy. Go there. Check out the location, check out what they offer, check out all the cool stuff that they do. On August 1st is going to be signups. It's going to be open to the first 40 people who sign up. You're going to sign up with a four, uh, sorry, with a $100 deposit. You're going to call them up, say, hey, I want to go to the retreat. They're going to take payment for $100 and you're in. Um, and I don't, I think the remainder due will be due like September 1st or something like that. Like they'll give you some time to get the rest of the money. It's $375 for the whole weekend. Thursday, you get three nights stay, three breakfasts, three lunches, three dinners. There's a exclusive vendor marketplace. Enchanted Old Farms is on board. I'm going to be there. Uh, we're getting some awesome vendors for you guys. I'm hoping that Happy Crafter 207 will be there. Um, her stuff is amazing. She has those blending boards that are so popular right now. We're going to have workshops on Friday. We're going to have all kinds of cool stuff. The 375 price is for a shared room, so you don't mind sharing. Um, there are some private rooms in the cabins, and then there's like bigger rooms in the cabins that have more than one bed. If you want a private room, you may do so. It is a bit of an additional charge. I, I think it's 425, but it could be wrong. All of the prices will be on the brochure that is going to come out very shortly. It will be on my website, Katie's website, Ravelry, uh, the website itself. It'll be everywhere, so you'll have all the information that you need. If you're thinking you want to come, come. This retreat is, even my husband said it was beautiful, and he's used to this area. He's grown up here. You drive to Bangor, or fly to Bangor. Then you go an hour north in the woods to Mill, well, more like 65, 70 minutes. So you drive over an hour into the woods, okay? Then you drive an extra eight miles on the Golden Road, which if you've ever watched American Loggers, you'll know the Golden Road is a private road, logging road is crazy. Then you leave the pavement and drive another mile into Millinocket Lake. You literally arrive at the shores of Mount Katahdin. Katahdin Lake is out in front of you. The mountain rises majestically in the distance. I know that sounds cliche, but oh my God, is it beautiful. It's the most beautiful you've ever seen. It's remote, but that's the point. It's away from everything. Even in the middle of the day today and all of the cabins were full, it was dead silent. It's just quiet. All you can hear is nature and the trees. And it smells amazing because all you can smell is the cedar and spruce and all of the woods that's there. And the air is so fresh and clean. We have some of the cleanest air in Maine. Sarah was also telling me that they have some of the best stargazing 
in New England. I can't wait to just go out and, and look at the stars and see them all. Like, it, there's no light pollution here. It's dark. Now, where I live, we're surrounded by trees. We don't have a great skyline. But up there, you totally do because it's right on the shores of the lake. If you need to take a break from craziness of life, you need to come to this retreat. Okay? Very um, rarely do you have an opportunity. Sorry, there's my beeper. Um, to have an affordable retreat in such a beautiful location. It really is. This is not like... Uncle Joe Bob's cabins. Okay, these are beautiful, nice, really premier luxury sort. I don't want to say luxury because people's versions of luxury are very different from my own. But this is really lovely stuff. Um, you're going to love the retreat center. I'm going to put some pictures at the end. Come, please come. It's going to be amazing. Some of the vendors going to be at the market are vendors that vend at Mass Sheep and Wool. Uh, New Hampshire Sheep and Wool, Fiber Frolic, possibly even Rhinebeck. I don't know if Enchanted Hall has done Rhinebeck or not, but seriously, bigger names. Come. Okay. Sign up school live August 1st. I will be all over social media about that when it happens. There will be more information in the coming days. Um, the woman who's running the retreat is taking a vacation to Alaska with her family, so she's trying to get everything done now so that we can um, have less to do, obviously, while she's away. I've got some stuff to do. We still have some vendors to contact. If you would like to donate a prize for a goodie bag or um, a door prize, let me know. Contact me on Ravelry. My Ravelry name is Boutros Babe, B-O-U-T-R-O-S-B-A-B-E. Uh, or you can email me at heather at highlandhandmaids.com. Uh, let me know what you want to do, and we will make sure that you get credit for that, and we will totally kiss your butt and bow at your feet for your awesomeness. So, uh... We're going to do that. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Katie's excited. Fingers crossed. I, fingers crossed that Katie can't come because if that if she can't come, that means she's at JetBlue, which is her dream. But I really want her there. Uh, if if she can be there, there is an airport in Millinocket. We're going to I'm going to cross my fingers on that one that the weather is is going to cooperate and maybe we can get Wendy her plane up there and maybe take some people for some flying. Just saying. Wouldn't that be awesome? So, that's the retreat stuff. The next time you see me, I'm going to be sitting in Nashville, Tennessee, talking with all of my friends and freaking out because I'm so excited because I'm at SSK. Did you watch the video from last year? Because it was crazy. Um, I will record, if not daily, at least I will record a bunch of stuff on my phone and I will compile a big thing at the end. I know people like the daily updates of SSK last year, so I might do a daily update. We'll see. Um... Of course, everything depends on whether or not Blip tells me to get lost. They haven't told me yet. I don't know if they're leaving the most highly... I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea. So we'll see. Uh, I know I don't have a solution for what's going on with Blip. I don't know. I've downloaded all my episodes off of iTunes so that I have them, but I don't know what else I'm going to do. I will always have my video on the blog. I can use Vimeo which is not Blip, but it's another embedding software, and I can do that, no problem. But the issue is getting it to iTunes, and that's where the hang-up is. I may have to contact uh, a tech person, an IT person, and see if they can do it for me, because I don't understand it. And I'm reasonably technically savvy, but I can't do this. You have to edit HTML, and I don't know how to do that, so... Um, if I can, if somebody will give me the solution, I will give it to you guys. But until then, we'll see. But it will always be available at thefiberistafiles.com. Every, ooh, I just hit my monitor, sorry. Uh, every episode I ever do will be available on thefiberistafiles.com. Uh, I am in the process of uploading them to YouTube so that when Blip kicks me off, they will still be available. I'll just have to re-embed 128 episodes. It is what it is. Um, I just totally kicked my monitor cable. So everything on my screen is green, so I probably should say goodbye now. Please shop the update tomorrow night. Every little bit helps. I heart you all, guys. I cannot wait to see some of you next week. I am so excited to see you. Some of you for the first time. Some of you again. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really, really excited. The next time you see me, I'll have a tattoo on my chest right here underneath my clavicle. I'm really geeky squee about that. It's going to be rad. Don't forget to keep spinning your tortoise flea stuff. Don't forget the update. Don't forget to be awesome. 
Until next week, guys, happy spinning and knitting, and thanks for tuning in. Bye. But there's a sweet song in my heart tonight Out on this lonely road It's like the sound of the sun going down And it warms me to my soul There's an old song in my heart tonight Someone I want to see Highway signs keep saying it's time to get back to sweet Tennessee. Uptown, downtown, chasing other sundown. Every town's a downtown when you're on your way. Truck stops, rain drops, cigarettes and hard knocks. Day after rainy day. But there's a sweet song in my heart tonight Out on this lonely road It's like the sound of the sun going down And it warms me to my soul